and hello guys welcome back to another video in my DIY analog synthesizer series right today is just going to be a little bit of a presentation no kind of real audio demo uh, but I'm going to show you the prototype front panel as I said it's a prototype this is not the final version there is a proper graphics for this which uh, does need updating may have to go back to the drawing board on that one so as you can see all the uh, the full signal path is laid out as so You've got the three oscillators, you've got oscillator one, oscillator two, oscillator three. Now everything that oscillator one, two and three can do, or, or its modulation path is all self-contained within this sort of this small module block here, sort of outline graphic. And the same thing with the filters. You have VCF one, filter one, filter two, and here we have the VCA and wave folder, which is a combined well, they're two separate PCBs for the wave folder and the voltage control amplifier. And then we have an additional chorus effect. So most of the modulation is down here. It's very simple. We have two LFOs, each having one, two, three, four, five different waveforms. And we have the two envelope generators. Uh, envelope generator one is the one that does most of the modulation for, you know, and envelope two being the one which is um, for your final output to the VCA. Uh, small difference this one has a polarity polarity uh, switch which can also be the depth I guess because this basically is supposed to be an external output and same thing with the LFOs so each one is actually hardwired to the LFO but the, along the top here I'm proposing to put a patch panel so we'll have some in out so there'll be some st certain parts on here so if we look say here uh, we have a modulation on or external off so that basically means if we on external off we, will, we can patch in one of the modules, uh, one of the modulators into the patch panel. That isn't, say for instance, hardwired. So what happens at the moment? We've got VCO1. Um, we have three mixable waveforms. So we don't have, we don't have to have a hard selection. Like say you can have sawtooth only square or the triangle. So we have, we can mix the volumes and the amounts of that. So we can, we, we can mix in three dimensions rather than, you know, some of these synthesizers have the continuous wave for mixing, but you can only really get two waveforms per, you know, at a time. I thought that would be, that's a lot, gives you a lot more timbral scope. Um, also we have the pulse width, so we can manually control the pulse width here from, I've kind of done it so now. I've kind of changed some values on this so this doesn't go through zero at the moment. I can change that back, but I'm kind of thinking it's a little bit pointless. Or, yeah, anyway. So, uh, if we spin this manual to volume control, if we turn it this way, we can go to LFO control. This is where our pulse width rate comes in. So, and we turn that pulse width rate up, so we're basically engaging a LFO. There is three separate pulse width modulation LFOs, which is, which is gives you some really good interesting effects. So they're not, the pulse width LFOs are not linked to these two LFOs. Um, if we come down here, the first oscillator one, we have a synchronization switch so we can turn the sync on. And this one works a little bit backwards where most synthesizers are seen with the sync, the way the sync work, works is the master os oscillator. In this case, which is VCO2, is the one that is being modulated by say, for instance, you modulate it with an envelope to give it the sort of sweep, the sort of downward sweep. And then that clocks or resets um, the slave oscillator, which is number one. At the moment, this is uh, the slave oscillator is the one that is modulated by an envelope. And oscillator two, obviously, is the master, which is the one that does the, the syncing. Okay, so. Uh, here we have FM, the way this is, I've shown this before in another video, the way this works is basically um, we have VCO3 modulates, frequency modulates VCO2, VCO2 frequency modulates VCO1. Additional, we have a feedback loop with VCO3, so this basically can modulate itself. And down here you have your modulation selector, so you can select between envelope 1 and on VCO1, we can select LFO1 modulation, or we can have the modulation completely off, which gives us the opportunity when the patch panel is done, is to patch in. Same thing with VCO2 and VCO, oh, sorry, VCO2 
um, is modulated by LFO2 and still envelope one, you can switch between. So I've kind of tried to mix it up a little bit so not everything is being modulated by saying envelope one because then there wouldn't really be much point of having a second LFO. I mean, most things are hardwired here, but like I said, you, if you switch it to the external, you do have the opportunity to sort of break out. That's the idea. So you can, you're can you not sort of like hard fixed to one mod, sort of modulation path. Um, course and fine tuning which is these two here on VCO1 and VCO2, and not on VCO3, we just have a coarse tune in here. Modulation depth, so basically this gives you the polarity of your modulation. So when you turn it to the minus, you have a negative uh, modulation, positive modulation on this side. And same thing, yeah, so that's the same thing through with all three oscillators. Now you may notice down here we've got a depth control. This kind of was my way of thinking. I kind of thought to myself, well, that's a little bit over the top. Why do we need the depth control when we have it already on the oscillators? But then I thought, well, actually, I could send this out straight out directly out to the patch panel. Same through the polarity on the envelope. So again, that can go to the patch panel to do anything externally. So you can modulate anything externally, um, positive or negative modulation from that. And so, yeah, so basically we what we will do, so for instance, if we have these, any of these waveforms through here, we'll swing them around to negative or positive modulation. Well, you, you know the coup anyway, people. Uh, so that's that. Over to the filters, we've got two at the moment. I have put in, we have two Steiner Parker type clone filters in there, uh, both 12 decibel per octave multi-mode filters. And that's your modulation switch. So we can go from high, uh, sorry, low pass, band pass, and high pass. Uh, we have resonance control and we have the two cutoff controls here and the input gain. So it depends on how hard you drive the filter. You sort of get you need to sort of try and strike a balance between filter and this you know, the filter and the oil oscillators coming in. Something you can obviously tailor to taste rather than again being hard fixed to a um, a particular amount. Uh, here again, it's the modulation depth that basically works pretty much the same as it does in the oscillators when we're at the middle position here. We've got zero modulation, we've been at zero volts. Uh, we'll go to negative or positive modulation. Again, we have the two selection switches. We can either have an envelope modulating or LFO. VCF1 is linked to LFO1 at the moment, and VCF2 is linked to LFO2. Okay, next row down, we have the notch switch, which only works in low pass and high pass mode. So basically, the notch combines the low pass and the high pass together. Um, and again, we have, if we have the modulation on, we can select between these two, these two. They are selected to the modulation on switch. Otherwise, we are off, or we could use, that again, we'll be going to the patch panel, so you can go external in. Okay, and these are two parts which are not engaged at the moment, which is the FM depth. I will possibly will be doing a revision to the Steiner Parker board PCB. So this will allow you to have FM modulation from, so you have audio rate modulation, FM modulation basically from, I'm not too sure, I'm probably going to use VCO1 to modulate VCF. One and VCO2 to modulate frequency modulate VCF2 really gives you some really really uh, nice effects with that it can be quite nasty and gnarly okay and over here we have the oh yeah so we have an on off here and we have a depth control if we move over to here we have a master cutoff so what the master cutoff basically does it combines both filter cutoffs voltage and we can sweep down. These are both linked in, sorry, let me think about that. These are both linked in series at the moment. So one VCF1 goes into VCF2. If it was both together, that would be parallel. So we can cut that, we can cut both cutoffs at exactly the same time. We also have a keyboard tracking on off here for both. So you know what keyboard tracking does. Once we push that into self oscillation, you can kind of use the sine waves as, an, as an, another additional tone, or you can use that as to just to track the keyboards like real instruments. As you go further down, we get darker. As we go up the scale, we get brighter. And on this side, we on the VCF two, we have a drive. So basically, what that does is basically is a feedback. So we feedback the signal through the VCA, send it straight into the mixer and basically bring the signal through again to really square off and distort the signal, if that's something to your taste. Another sort of scope for a timbrel uh, 
sculpting. VCA, quite simple. We have level control here. And then we have the LFO. We can have an LFO for some tremolo. Uh, this is linked to LFO2. So this is wired. So whichever wave shape we choose here, that will, is basically what we will use as the modulation for the VCA. We have the saturation amount. This is basically how much the wave folder will fold. And we have a wet and dry blend so we can blend between wave folded, wet signal and dry signal. Down here we have a bucket brigade analog chorus. And it's the um, chorus on off. I was gonna put this on the blend part in the end. I quite think I tried it before and it wasn't quite doing exactly what I wanted. I was still getting a bit of a signal one way or the other. I thought, you know what, forget it, have it hard on off for, for simplicity. And we have clone modes here, which basically will switch in another capacitor, which um, goes to the um, the oscillator from the time, the sort of timer clock chip, which goes to the bucket brigade. So we can either have a sort of, yeah, we'll give it more of a delayed effect. It sort of gives it more copies of that. That's kind of how the chorus works. It kind of copies the signal many times to give you that sort of ensemble effect. We've got a rate control, which is an LFO, which basically runs the whole thing, runs the speed of the uh, the, the signal. And a bit like uh, you have on sort of the, I think it's the Alpha Juno 2, where you can tie the chorus on, but you can vary the chorus as opposed to the sort of Juno 106, Juno 6 type, you can have chorus one or chorus two. Basically, those choruses, you're very, very, with the chorus one and the chorus two, you're varying the speed. That's kind of what this does, is, but you have it in a rate, rate blend, but also we have a range, so you can have a fast range, you can have a slow range, and you have a depth control. Um, over to envelope one, not too much to say about that. We've got the sort of this um, pretty much standard parameters, attack, decay, sustain, and the release. We have indicator lights for them. And we have a polarity where we can change from positive to negative envelope, which is I'm going to send out again, patch panel to do anything external. And we have a range for the release. So at the moment that's on slow. We can't really see that. So that's on slow. Put on fast range, fast released. So that's the slow release and that's a faster release. Okay. And also it has for the gate, we have a gate option. We can clock it with the gate, the external gate coming in. So every time we hit a key, the gate opens, we open up the envelope, or you can have this clocked by LFO2, I think. Let's just prove that. So yeah, so as we can see, LFO2 is the pulse out, which comes out, you know, fires the gate for this, this particular envelope. Anyhow, okay, so same pretty much same sort of parameter controls with envelope two, but as I said before, this goes straight off to the VCA and just have a slow and fast release range basically. LFOs, we have range, range switch, we can have fast range or a slow range. We have again we have a rate controls here. This is just our waveform selectors. We got pulse wave, sample and hold, ramp up triangle and sign on both they're both exactly identical and um, depth control as i've said before i don't want to keep boring you with this goes out to the patch panel if it at zero we have no sort of modulation out so we should have both of the voltage both negative and the positive should cancel each other out um over here there's a couple of performance controls uh, we have a glide and this is a glide minimum and glide maximum i'm not quite sure what the glide time is at the moment but that's something i'm still kind of experimenting with at the moment um, also, we have the vibrato. Uh, I don't know if you can see that switch just here. So we can switch between triangle vibrato and the square vibrato. So it's quite nice with the vibrato. Um, this is the depth control and this is the rate for that. Unfortunately, I'm not going to put an indicator on it because I don't think it's extremely necessary, if I'll be honest with you. And yeah, so the, here it is. The Advantage O3M, all ready to go. As I said, this is a prototype panel. I'm hoping to get some ideas. If you guys in the comments can leave me some, give me some food for thought, give me some ideas what may be the way forward with this, that it's not going to completely bust the bank. But I thought, you know, if I can get this down in a sort of prototype, sketch it up, hand draw it, I know that I've got everything pretty much. Because I had to kind of go back with this a few times and made a few mistakes and say, mm, actually, this will be better here. This could go here. So it's just as well as I haven't literally gone for the real, real deal straight away because I would have had to come back on this one again. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, people. 
Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, show me your support, and I will be back with some, probably some more sound demos, etc. Anyway, thanks for watching, take care of yourselves and be safe.